The first time he saw Seabiscuit, the colt was walking through the fog at five in the morning. Smith would say later that the horse looked right through him, as if to say, what the hell are you looking at? Who do you think you are? He was a small horse, barely 15 hands. He was hurting, too. There was a limp in his walk, a wheezing when he breathed. Smith didn't pay attention to that. He was looking the horse in the eye. God damn. He was the son of Hardtack, sired by the mighty man of war. But the breeding did little to impress anyone at Claiborne Farms. Get rid of him. At six months, he was shipped off to train with the legendary trainer, Sonny Fitzsimmons, who, over time, developed a similar opinion of the colt. Is that a racehorse or a lead pony? The judgment wasn't helped by his gentle nature. Where his sire had been a fierce, almost violent competitor, Seabiscuit took to sleeping for huge chunks of the day and enjoyed lolling for hours under the boughs of the juniper trees. His other great talent was eating. Though half the size of other colts, Seabiscuit could frequently eat twice as much. Fitzsimmons decided the horse was lazy and felt sure he could train the obstinance out of him. I wanted to hit him as many times as I can over a quarter of a mile. When he didn't improve, they decided the colt was incorrigible. They made him a training partner to better horses, forcing him to lose head-to-head -head duels to boost the confidence of the other animal. By the time he was three years old, Seabiscuit was struggling in two cheap claiming races a week. And soon he grew as bitter and angry as his sire Hardtack had been. He was sold for the rock bottom price of $2,000. And of course, it all made sense. Champions were large. They were sleek. They were without imperfection. When they finally did race him, he did just what they had trained him to do. He lost.